Speaking of war, our own Wallace Edwards is in the studio today. He's going to do a little behind the music on him. Wallace, are you there? Good morning, John. Hi. I love your behind the music bits. I don't know if it's all true, but I want it to be. Absolutely true. <laughs> well, tell us what, t- tell us, uh, is, is there a lot to know about the band War that we were unaware of? By 1969, the hippie culture of shiny, happy, stoned-out youths had all but shrunk into obscurity. The Vietnam War had grown from a half-hearted police activity into an all-out military operation on foreign soil. Many former users of lysergic acid came to realize there really was such a thing as being too high. And what started as the flower power movement was seen by many former hipsters as nothing but a means to a great moral decline. And just when a decidedly far right-wing conservative American government should have breathed a sigh of relief and let the whole 60s counterculture go, a little-known plan to put the final nail in the coffin of the age of Aquarius backfired in such a strange and unexpected way that some intelligence staffers are still absolutely baffled at what went wrong. And it all started with a California band known as War. They were an eclectic mix of musicians gathered by former Animals lead singer Eric Burden, who performed a varied form of Mexicali jazz rock, a sometimes mellow and always very rhythmic funk style. But what Burden and the members of War didn't know was the shady, almost frightening background of their chosen producer, Jerry Goldstein. He was a former CIA opera with an extensive history in disinformation and black ops, who had enjoyed some earlier success in pop music as the producer of the McCoys and the Angels. One of Goldstein's pet projects, the experimentation of human primal sound recognition and subliminal messaging had gotten the attention of his colleagues in the intelligence community. He found that when certain sounds were mixed with harmonica, saxophone, and several Latin percussion instruments, listeners would experience an undeniable urge to do almost anything. So, when Goldstein was offered millions by the Nixon administration to come up with a subversive way to get young people to stay home and watch TV as opposed to protesting against the war in Southeast Asia, much less go out and vote for liberals like George McGovern, Jerry Goldstein was more than happy to oblige. And that's where the whole experiment turned into a nightmare for its planners. Because Goldstein, who'd spent much of his early service years in the artillery, was more than nominally tone deaf. And he simply got his sounds mixed up. When the first War album was released on December 4th of 1970 and to the tune of 14 million records sold, it was a huge commercial success. Audiences loved the fusion mix of all those different styles, and Goldstein's subliminal mix was working in a most unexpected way. Because listeners did not feel an undeniable urge to stay home and engage in passive entertainment, instead, they felt an overwhelming compulsion to copulate furiously, immediately, and in great numbers with anyone in their immediate vicinity, especially in California's Mexican-American communities where the music of war became an instant standard. The United States actually experienced another baby boom in the mid to late 70s, undoubtedly due to the hypnotic rhythms and subliminal messages of War's first record album. Initial pressings still have the same effect on unsuspecting LP record collectors to this day. So, if you're disgruntled about the drastic impending cuts to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, overpopulation, dwindling natural resources, and sky-high inflationary pricing on food products, you have your own federal government to thank, along with a California band called War. And that's this week's Today in Rock History... I'm Wallace Edwards. Now back to the real deal with John Clay Wolf. Actually, we have some callers to call and win the uh, contest. Are they copulating right now? They're copulating <laughs> on the air. That is funky music.